Now, if CGMPs are a regulation that oversee the drugs and device industry, then there must be some core values that they are seeking to protect for the community they are trying to safeguard. Now, what are those core values? Safety, efficacy and quality. Safety for the patient, efficacy to the patient and quality so that whatever you are claiming on your label is what the patient receives. Now please remember we are in a manufacturing environment. We cannot start manufacturing until and unless we have a license in place, an approval in place and a no approval will ever be issued to anybody if the substances that they are using has not already passed the safety test at GLP level. The efficacy claims at the GCP level. These are already there. That's why you have been permitted to take them up into a formulation. So why are they coming back and asking you about safety, efficacy and quality? It is because they wish to be reassured that a material that has been declared safe remains safe while it is with you from the time you receive it till the time the material reaches the patient. Material whose efficacy has been established comes to you. What are you doing to safeguard the efficacy from the time you receive it till the time it reaches the patient? And quality. Whatever claims you are making, does it meet those specifications? That's their main concern. The core values that they are trying to protect for that community. The USFDA goes one step further. It talks about safety and quality, yes. Instead of talking about efficacy, it talks about three other elements. Safety, identity. Material that has come to you, have you checked its identity? Now, have you protected its identity, preserved its identity from the time you receive it to the time you process it, to the time you pack it and to the time it reaches the patient? Has the identity been protected. Had it been protected, no hypoglycemic tablet would have ever got into a hypotensive pack or vice versa. But that's the reason why they are so particular about identity. If the identity had been known, no polyethylene glycol would have ever got in place of glycerol. The next thing they worry about is the strength indicated on the label. Now, if you say 50 mg and you put a 500 mg inside, what would be the effect on the patient, assuming it is an infant? If you say 500 mg and put a 5 mg inside, what is going to be the effect on the patient? So, what care are you taking in your processing from start to finish to protect and promote the strength claimed on the label or in the product. The next thing that they worry about is the purity. You have received material, you have tested the material, you have approved the material. From the time you receive it to the time it goes to the patient, is its purity at any point of time ever compromised? This, they would like to be reassured. So you have to only ask yourself, whenever you do something, by doing this, am I placing a patient at risk? Vis-a-vis -vis his safety, vis-a-vis -vis the efficacy of the drug, vis-a-vis -vis the quality of the drug that I am offering. By doing this, am I improving the safety Increasing the protection of the identity. Protecting and preserving the strength. Protecting and preserving the purity. And safeguarding the quality of the product that is passing through my hands. This is what the regulators look for when they come to you for inspection. What all measures are in place to protect and promote safety, efficacy, quality 
protect and promote safety, identity, strength, purity and quality of the products you manufacture. See how they have articulated these concerns. First of all, they define a drug. A drug is defined as articles intended for use in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment or the prevention of disease in man or other animals. Articles other than food intended to affect the structure or any function of the body of man or other animals and articles intended for use as a component of any articles specified above. Having now defined what is a drug, they now go on to tell you what is it that they seek at your place. A drug is deemed to be adulterated if the methods used in or the facilities or controls used for its manufacture, processing, packing or holding do not conform to or are not operated or administered in conformity with CGMP to assure that such drug meets the quality and purity characteristics which it perpets or is represented to possess. It is deemed to be adulterated. And if in his estimation and please remember that he is qualified. That's why he is there as an inspector. He knows. He has seen facilities that are good. And he has seen facilities that are not so good. And he has come to you. So in his estimation, if he is not satisfied. That the care that you are taking. The environment in which you are working. The methods that you are using. Do not give him that confidence that you are in compliance with the norms as laid down, then he feels that you are violating the quality system. Now, you could say, hey, listen, I've tested everything. I'm very sure about what I'm doing. Don't you worry. I've got everything in a state of control. If you don't believe me, take whatever samples you like. Please take it to my lab and test it there or take it to your lab and test it over there. And even if one of those results are out of specifications, I am willing to listen to whatever you have to say. But otherwise, I think you are overreacting. There is no nothing. Everything is under control. No. He does not have to do that. Look at this. Prosecution under unique legal doctrine does not require proof of criminal intent as a prerequisite for criminal culpability. Neither requires that actual harm from contamination of a drug product has to be proven for a charge that the product is adulterated, nor that each article in the batch be adulterated before the entire amount is subject to condemnation or other action. This is the power with which he comes to enforce the regulation.